Shot this yesterday just to see how lamination works on this bait and good lord. What has Jason from Epic Bait Molds made now? What has he done? If you guys aren't aware, the possibilities with this bait are pretty intense. Skin pours, laminations. I thought the PUD was borderline unbeatable. The PUD, the open pour, two piece, aluminum mold. I don't know, let's compare. Let's set them side by side. Take a peeky poo. This is a five and three eighth inch bait. The PUD was three and a half. With injection stuff, you are more limited. Like you have to inject it and you can't just layer the colors up as much as you want by pouring it in. It, there has to be a single color or laminations with a lamination block. But at the same time with this mold, you can skin pour it. You can pour a color and let it droop down. The lateral line, see the ridge? That's the lateral line of the bait. And plastic just pours down that perfectly. I haven't done it myself. I just got these molds in yesterday. This was the first one. It's the first one. It's a perfect little bait fish. Once again, designed by me and Epic Bait Molds. I mean, they're making a name for themselves with stuff like this. This is insane. This is an insane mold. It took a while to get out. We designed this one for a while. EpicBaitMolds.com, link in the description if you want one of these. There's certainly no machining paths spared to get this bait looking this good. He told me he had to learn like 3D animation and there was just stuff he had to learn to be able to even make the shape of this bait and get the paths right for the tooling. And you know, I'm not, I'm not familiar with machining myself, like, but from what he was able to explain to me and I was able to understand from it, complicated, very complicated to get this shape. Let's, let's shoot some. Comes with bolts and wing nuts and it's got the pen keys to align on the other sides of the bolts too. And and you can just clamp this in your vise too and shoot it. That's kind of, that's what I've been doing with this. Um, you, you're gonna scuff it up a little bit if you clamp it in your vise and you have metal jaws like me. But isn't that cool? He even puts our logos on it. Epic Bait Molds, Marlin Baits. This sort of stuff's like a dream come true for me. I didn't, I never thought in a million years I'd have, I'd be working with a company designing aluminum molds for other people to make baits. Thank you, Jason and Amanda. Thank you. Let's shoot some. Do this gently, scuff it up as little as possible. It's in there. Can you guys tell I'm kind of dumbfounded with this one? I don't, I don't want to under express how freaking good this is, but I can't believe he made it. I can't believe he made something this nice. It's very hard to express yourself on YouTube through a video, but I'm kind of giddy. Can you tell? All right, back to the lure making. These are the colors of the first one I poured or shot there. So I'm gonna warm these back up. I'm gonna add some plastic to them, do some stuff with it, make a make an even cooler color from a cool color. I'm getting very low on plastic too. Need to get another five gallon bucket of that dead on. Dead on tube craw blend is what I use mostly. I think the PUD, that open pour PUD mold, that you can use the swim bait plastic for that for sure. The swim bait blend of the dead on floating. I always use a floating plastic too with swim baits. It's how I roll. So, wanted to mention if you guys aren't familiar, a lamination block is one of these. Plastic comes from this end and this end, and it gets funneled through an injector port with two holes, like that. And it shoots one side of the bait and the other side of the bait at the same time. And it's at the same time because you use one of these injectors. Something like this. This is a bass tackle injector. Has never given me issues. Like this is a really good injector. I think they're kind of hard to find now too, but lucky me, you just go at it like that, you know? Perfect explanations on this channel. This plastic is getting hot. We're almost there. Just give me another minute. These colors were very good. I just need to add a little bit of something, something, I think. I'm gonna put some very fine silver flake into the white. Not skimp on that too. Plenty of it in there. And I want some gold. Same size flake, just gold in the top. Add some shimmy shine. Absolutely stunning. I'm gonna vacuum these two. That one just barely fits two cups at a time. So with laminations, it's important to measure the temperature and make sure each cup is the same temperature before you shoot. 
And this one's a lot colder, so it's going back in the microwave for just 15 seconds. This one's cooling down while that one's warming up, so it doesn't take a long time to get those temperatures even. This one was over 350 though. That one was 320. That felt pretty even. Here we go. The coolest part is, it's like less than two minutes later and this is ready to be demolded. The aluminum sucks all the heat out of the plastic, you know? Look at that lamination. Man, like what a bait fish. I'm going to some good ponds today too. I'm excited for the fishing section of this video already. Okay, I wanna try to do a, a skin pour in this groove and then inject it too, so. Let's do that on video too. And then after that, I'm just gonna shoot a bunch of these and take them fishing, as you do. You know where I'm going with that? I think you do. You guys like watching me clean an injector? I think you do. It is a bit of an unsettling process, I'll admit. Okay, you guys saw that pink I, I was thought that I was gonna use. I made some fresh stuff, much more pink. I added some pearl white into it as well. With the scale pattern on this bait and stuff, pearls are the way to go. It's ready. Doesn't even need to be vacuumed. I'm gonna fill up the head first. Well, not fill up the head, just pour some in the head. And let that droop back. Like such as. Try to do the same thing on the other side. Look at that. I did that one better. Now, we're gonna laminate this with our two colors. I'm gonna add a little bit more green to this. It's too gold. A little, just a tiny bit more of a hint to green to this and then that's gonna look like a rainbow trout. I'm gonna add some black flake to this too. A little bit of green, black flake. Leave the belly as it is. It's gonna be good. Have the hook slot plate. Can't forget that. Put it in there, close up the mold. Get your wing nuts. Wing nuts. Secure your wing nuts. How I remember it is the bolt on the top is the top of the bait. So the bolt on the top's the top. That's how I remember how to orient this mold. I'd say, let's do 25 more seconds. Take them out and shoot. You get a feel for time. After a while of doing this, you get, you get a feel of time, how much longer things need. Oh, I need to add the green to the... You also forget a lot of stuff. Green and black flake. Color shift green and black flake. I don't even know where, I got this off of eBay. I don't even know what the brand is. Pearl Pleasures actually is the, that's the brand name. Pearl Pleasures. I just use a feeler gauge as a scoop. So the best use for a feeler gauge is this. That was a lot. This is gonna be green, but that's what we wanted with black flake. A lot of green and plenty of black. If that's not a color that you can't get behind, you can exit out of this video right now. You're not wanted here. <laughs> that's a good one. Woo! Rainbow trout coming right up. Sucked up a little bit of air, but that's no big deal. Those bubbles rise to the top of the injector, and then you can just inject anyway. Sorry, I'm kind of shaky because I'm putting a lot of pressure on this. You shouldn't put that much pressure on this. I just have a bad habit of doing that. Don't put a lot of pressure on this. Very hot plastic under high pressure. Danger. Not gonna have a good time. I think that was a South Park reference, I think. The snowboarding thing. A good, have a good time. Not gonna have a fun time, good time. It's good time. Can you just admire this color again for a second? There's a lot going on with that color. That'd be good in a warm. Maybe I'll save it for some worms later. You guys ready? It is so awesome that it's just like a couple minutes later. I've been getting used to like, open pour puds and stuff, where you gotta wait like a half hour for that mold to cool down because you had it on a hot plate. This is nice. Two minutes, you got your bait. I'm having trouble finding things to say about this because it's just, I'm, I just get dumbfounded. Like the laminations even aren't perfectly solid, crisp, lines across it but it makes it like natural and a little bit of the black flake got into the bottom mixed together just a little bit on the seam line 
and it fades into each other. But then there's a crisp, hard bloodline that's just not even cold cracked because you put it under pressure, you know? You inject the hot plastic and it pushes itself into the seam. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Good gravy. That's the thumbnail right there. Maybe if I make a better one, I don't know. So, I have another idea. Mixing up some black right here. Pretty opaque black is what this is. Using them artistic words. Okay, let's see how steady I am this morning. Should probably be wearing a glove. See if we can get a drop. That'll do, I just need to leave it there. Let that cool off. You see it's not, I got a little drip towards the head there. I'm gonna be able to just peel that off with some tweezers. Like such as. And you know what that is. That's a shad dot. Let's do the other side. That, is that too big? That'll do. That one's bigger, but it'll do. Yeah, let's make it the same size. I can do better than that. That's what's nice about this, you just peel it off and pour again. I did the exact same thing. That is not easy to pour an appropriately sized shad dot. Take some practice, but we're bait makers. We're willing to practice. Third time's a charm, right here. Yeah. Third time was a charm. Now my plan is to laminate this with just some typical shad colors and just make a shad with a dot. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. These were the two colors I came up with. Been using that white belly a lot, but then I came up with this. I think that's a good, you know, top of the shad color. It'll contrast with that shad dot, I think, really well. Highlights and color shifts in that, so it's gonna look pretty. Last one I'm gonna reveal to you guys, and then I'm just gonna go crazy and make a bunch. This is supposed to be a shad. Man. I had that top dark color a little too hot and it bled into the white, but does that really matter when you see that? There's an eye on it for you. If you like this effect, which I kind of do, just make the top color hotter and then shoot it. That is the easiest, most amazing looking bait fish I've ever made. Stunning. I didn't have anything to say, I thought I did, but I just turned the camera on and just did something weird right there, and sorry, my bad. That is so incredibly easy to rig, and it's so, like, it, it gets text posed, and to the end of that hook slot, you see that little bump, that's the hook point right there, just ready to collapse if a fish bites, but with this bait, it's, it's, it's totally when a fish bites, like, I'm gonna catch multiple fish with this today, I think, not an issue at all. I might be able to just use my normal one ounce bass rod. These baits weigh 1.1 to 1.2 ounces with the beast hook in them. So it's not a lot of plastic, it's just like an ounce of plastic. How did I get this this freaking tangled? What the heck? This is 50 pound braid. This is probably going to be perfect. Yeah. That feels like perfection to me. You don't even need swim bait gear, you can use a conventional rod if you got a one ounce rod, because this is one ounce. I made nine of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. All different colors, I think I covered the gambit. I have confidence. Multiple fish will be caught today with this bait. Maybe one, I don't know. We're gonna catch something. I'm not giving up till I catch something. I decided to bring my swim bait rod too, just for, you know, testing reasons. See if it actually does feel better on the big rod. See you on the water. We're gonna start off where we caught a fish with the pud. Thought it would be appropriate. I need to figure out a name for this bait. Still, I can come up with some stupid names. I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a good stupid one by the end of this video. Time to see the action on this bait. It's insane. A lot of people at the creek and I felt weird talking. 
and it seemed pretty dead. Don't you hate red-winged blackbirds? That bird is the biggest jerk in the bird kingdom. Let's have a look at the action again. go fish on it doesn't feel oh it's a good one man I wish I had a name for this bait because then I could say bass on the whatever this is that's not a bad bass that is a solid christening of this bait two pounders two pounders it's a two pounder like that swim bait. Be free. That collapsed beautifully. And you can see the fish tore up the head right there. Bit the head. Bait collapsed. It all just worked out. One fish on the board. Wonder if it was the color. Oh! There's, no, there's more down there. I need to back up. This is a much more natural color, so. Look at that. That's another pound and a halfer. Solid hook set. <laughs> you know when it's in their eye socket. They want it. They want it. It's official again. Bass like this bait. I need a name for it. Really need a name for it now. Oh, that was a crappie. I don't know why I even set the hook. A crappie just came up and nibbled on the tail and I got all excited. I'm kind of embarrassed that happened and I did that that way. <laughs> Jeez. Ah, oh, swim bait fishing, man. Kind of puts you on edge all right let's head back to that spot where i caught those two give it a few casts if i don't catch anything let's go make some more of these then we'll go to another pond and hit every spot on the way back as well oh that was crazy i just one-handed that bass these fish are going crazy for this bait not bad. It's getting real official. Somebody's calling me. My mom. One sec, guys. Hello. Nope. What's up? Oh, yeah. Okay, I talked to my mom on the phone for like a half an hour. And then I left. And now we're at a different pond. Dare I say, a better pond. And I made some more of these. But I think at this point I can get you a good video of the action. Shoot. I think that's a smaller bass. There we go. Decent bass, again, on this bait that has no name. Not bad. Where's the five pounder? Got something way out there. That was closer to that drain. Well, there's a, you guys don't know what that is, but let's catch this fish. Look at those hook sets. Must get closer to fish and catch them. Ooh. There we 
we go. That's a good one. This one's a little better. Yeah, not bad. Get in here. How much do you weigh? Yeah, you're probably just two. 0 0.05 ounce, 0 0.05 pounds less. I don't know how many fish that was, but that did tear up my bait. Luckily, I have a new one. There we go. Yeah, I tossed one of these. There we go. I was gonna say, I tossed one of these in the drain over there and just let it sink, bump, bump, and set the hook. Yeah. Dinkiest one of the day. Back at this pond, where we caught three? Did we catch three? Yeah, we caught three here. Back at this pond. I have caught a lot of bass today. It's nice when you're able to say that. And I'm not done. First cast. Watch me catch one right here. Five pounder. Ignore that. Got one. Woo! Right when it hit the water. This guy's got orange eyes. Is that normal? Huh? An orange eyed largemouth? Or is that like a hybrid kind of thing? Don't they usually have gold eyes? That's weird. Huh. Huh. Maybe I'm just really uneducated when it comes to largemouth. <laughs> and that's really common. <laughs> now you guys can really see the action. After a full day of fishing, I'm finally showing you the action for real. See that? See how absolutely insane that tail goes? I'm sure that you can see that. Look at that. Look at that. Gorgeous. <sighs> Catching all those bass, man. Makes you tired. That was a full day of fishing. It's 8.35 right now. I need a name for this bait. I don't know of it yet. You know what? There's a link below to the product page for this mold. And by the way, the mold's gonna be 135. The price has been lowered. I guess it's not been lowered, it's just it was going it was going to be 135 from the beginning and I just didn't know. 135 for this bait. That's whoo! Where is it? There is not much like this out there. There really is not anything like this out there. That nice, that detailed, that smooth shooting of a single cavity, amazing, highly detailed swim bait. There's not, there's not much out there like that. All right, go find out what the name of this is. Click on the link. I think that bait proved itself. It just, it's, it's over five inches and it just catches bass after bass. The hookup ratio is amazing. It's got that hook slot on the top and the bottom, recesses. It's just, that's gonna be very hard not to tie on every time I go fishing. That right there. I just need to get something big with it now. It's, a fi it's over, it's five and three eighth inch. Like it's the size, you know, it's the right size. Need to get that five pound committer. Anyway, get one if you shoot plastics, you'll enjoy it. I guarantee you, you'll enjoy that thing. Action on this bait. There was one point I took off the tail just to see what it's like. And yeah, it's got, it's a lot like, and by tail, I mean that little tail fin. It's a lot like a Kai Tech when you do that, just like, consistent and the body stays still. But with it, with that little tail piece on the back, it just, like it'll flap, flap up and down and side and like the faster you retrieve, the more erratic that gets. I think it's enticing. I think that's an extra element of like woundedness. A lot of the time when you fish with lures, that's what you're mimicking is woundedness and it triggers a fish to get that wounded fish. It's an easy target. So I think that does it well. Who knows, like, you don't know, I don't know. Just a guess. Anyway, 
I don't even have to do my weird little fade in with my logo and fade out with my logo. I can just go like with these, you know? <laughs> Once again, thank you, Jason and Amanda. Good work. Video's over. On to the next bait. Look at that. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Got one. Is that normal? I'm kind of giddy, can you tell? That felt pretty even. It is a bit of an unsettling process. Complicated. Sucked up a little bit of air, but that's no big deal. You just peel it off. Okay, I talked to my mom on the phone. This is probably gonna be perfect. It's very hard to express yourself on YouTube. The pud. 